إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يحدي الله فلا مدل لا وما يدل فلا هادي لا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير يا أيها الذين آمنوا الطق يا أيها الذين آمنوا حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساعدون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوضا عظيما أما بعد We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We glorify him We beseech him We implore him For his countless blessings His countless ni'am His countless hasanat and barakat That he has bestowed upon us Almost all the time no, not almost. 2020 was a very interesting year. I think all of us can agree. I can certainly agree. It was a year that we can't really describe it because it was just so insane. 2020 was a time of uncertainty and we're still in some of that uncertainty right now whatever you want to call it, people dying, people using, losing their jobs, a raging pandemic, uh, political non-structure, anything really, you can add it to the list of what really went on in the year 2020. So Alhamdulillah, we're in a new uh, year. And we are still dealing with some of that hardship. And I think that we will always deal with some of that hard, hardship because that is inevitable. And we should all know that as Muslims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in Al-Quran, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوءِ وَنَقْسٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرَ الصَّابِرِينَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةً قَالُوا that those people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test us with loss of food, loss of resources. We won't have food or fruits, loss of resources. We will experience loss of life, debt. We will be tested in a way that we will just have multiple hardships upon hardships upon hardships, a barrage of hardships. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, blessed be the patient. Blessed be the people who persevere with patience doing during these hardships. Persevere and have patience during these hardships. What is the main, what is what is the essence of this ayah? The people who have patience realize that this entire, these entire hardships that we're facing now and these uncertainty in these times that we're facing now are not here to stay. They will go away because they're not, they're not permanent. The same way they, those same people, those same Sabirin realize that this world is not permanent. Nothing in this word, world is per permanent. This world is a tool to use in a test or an examination to see what is really deep inside myself and deep inside you all. Deep inside ourselves to see what is really inside. How, what level is our Iman really at? So it looks to see that. So the people who have high Iman and have a very high level of Iman, they will be the ones who are patient. 
they will be the ones who persevere during all these hardships. Because they realize that they came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They realize that, yes, they're in hardship, but they came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will return to Almighty God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They realize that, and what the only the fact of realizing, realizing that causes ease in yourself. Think of all the anxiety we have been facing, all of us. Muslim or not, I'm talking about human, the human race. How much anxiety the world has been facing for the past 15 or 16 months. But blessed be, but blessed be the sovereign, the ones who are patient. Being patient means that you understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has you have come from Him and you will return to Him. The same way this world has come to Him, come from Him and it will return to Him. This world only serves a purpose. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala owns us. We are His property. Every single one of us in this world is property. We are a creation. Shouldn't the creation, shouldn't the creator do anything he wants with the creation? So if he wants to, so if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his graciousness, in his mightiness, wants to send down hardship upon hardship, what does that mean? Does that mean Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates us? That he wants to disgrace us? Shame his creation? No, my dear brothers and sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves us. He loves his creation. The whole point of this is just one huge test. To test our iman. To see, to see if we keep calling on him or not. To see if we keep making dua to him or not. To see if, do we get caught up in all of this anxiety and uncertainty? Or do we actually go and bow down our heads and make dua and call on him? And obviously that's the choice. Obviously that's the choice. Because when you do those things, and when you know and you are among those same sabirin, who say, in, from Allah we come and from Allah we will to Allah we will return. When you are from amongst those people, the ease comes out of you. The, 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 that tension, that pain starts to unwind. And on the flip side, we have the next type of people. People who are so self-centered. People who are so arrogant. They're so obnoxious, they think the whole world runs around them. The planets rotate around them. They don't care about anyone else. They only care about themselves. Those same people who are so self-centered and arrogant, you will witness in them rising pain. Nothing but pain. They won't have any ease. Because they're not being patient, nor are they admitting or even remembering or realizing that this world is not permanent, this is not real. We live in a transitional time period until we all, inshallah, jami and go to Jannah. But those people, you will find them and you will have pain upon pain upon pain because they won't be realizing it. So all that pain wells up, goes inside of them. What is the difference between the two? Someone who goes and, be, be, and, be, and, and perseveres with patience from all of these hardships. And then someone who doesn't do that. Nor does that person realize that this is all just uh, temporary. That their existence is not independent as they thought. What is the difference between the two? The difference is that the Sabirin, they have something to hope for. And that is the key word, hope. They have something to hope for. They're always hoping for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help. They're always hoping for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. They're always hoping and praying. And just having that hope softens you up inside. Just having that hope makes you unwind a little bit. But if you go and see someone now who is not realizing those things, you're not going to see any ease. You're not going to see any unwinding. You're not going to see it. 
Because one person, one person, one side is hoping for good and the other person isn't doing anything. So how can they be similar? They're not. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those same sabirin. Those same sabirun who say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilahi raji'un. It's not just something we say when someone dies. It's not just something we say when some, some, some uh, affliction hits us. But it's the essence of the phrase, the essence of the phrase, the siyaq al-ibara in our hearts, that just we, we live those words. We don't just say it when we get the message that, okay, someone in our community has sadly died. No, we live those words, words by every day waking up and knowing and just having it at the back of our head that, yes, this world is not permanent. Our existence, we can't depend on ourselves for our existence. Our existence is not independent. We depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all of His graciousness for that type of uh, dependence. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who realize that. To make us among those same sabirin. Make us among those same people who know the truth and who has ease and who can unwind and not have increased pain during these uncertain, unconventional times. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Wa Salatu Wa Salamu Ala Ashraf Al Anbiya Iwa Al Mursaleen, Sayyidina Wa Habibina Wa Nabiina Wa Maulana Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wa Salam, Rabbi Shrahli Sadwe Wa Yasirli Ami Wahlu Al Uqatatam Al Lisan Yakahu Kauli Look at all the prophets that have came before us, starting from our father Adam Alaihi Salam. And then all the subsequent prophets and anbiya and rusul Were they somehow honored by these hardships that they were facing? By the hardships that they were facing, can we compare the hardships that we're facing now as a global community? Of course not. But those hardships that those, the, our forefathers, those same anbiya and rusul, what they did, it wasn't an honor to them. It was a test for them as well. Because they were the greatest of creation. When Adam alayhi salam, when he was cast out from Jannah all the way to earth. Did anyone stop to think how did Adam alayhi salam feel about that? The pain that he must have felt? The discomfort and this ease and shame? It wasn't an honor that he had a hardship. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had a plan and he trusted and he put his faith in Allah. He was among those sabirun that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Al-Quran. When Nuh alayhi salam, when he was betrayed by his own son, how do you think he must have felt? The Anbiya had feelings too. The Rusul had feelings too. Our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, how do you think he felt? We know exactly how he felt because almost every single night he would cry and cry for us, his ahbabi. And he called us his ahbab. Because even though he didn't know us and we didn't know him, we still love him. But look at all the hardships that he went through in his life sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But yet he was among, he was probably the greatest so amongst the Sabirin. Because why? Every single one of those anbiya, those great Rusul, and our Nabi and our exalted and noble Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they live the same one phrase. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Not just saying it at the janazah or when you go to a wake, but you live that ibarah, you live that phrase. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who live that phrase 
And inshallah, once we all live that phrase, we will see the ease come into our lives. We will see the goodness that comes into our lives. Inna Allah tayyibun wa yuhibbu tayyibah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said that, oh, that Allah does not like anything that is bad. He loves everything that is good because He is goodness. So we need to be amongst the people who persevere and be among those same sabirin that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned. Because that's when more and more and more goodness will come into our lives. Bi'ithnillah. I want to end with one more note. Um, Despite all of these times, these craziness that's going on in the news all over the world that's affecting each and every one of us, one thing that we can do as Muslims is not let up in our dua and our afkar. We don't want to be among those same people who are always idle and only thinking about themselves. We want to be amongst the sabirin, not the other side of people, the other side of people who are self-centered, and who don't care about anyone else, who two things that the world and the planet revolves around them, who are obnoxious and arrogant. If, tw- if the year 2020 showed us anything, it showed us that we are not as tough as we thought as a human race. And we're not. We are dependent on the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are dependent on Him to exist, we are dependent on Him to live, we are dependent on Him to prosper, and we are dependent on Him to prosper again in the Akhirah bi Ta'ala, all of us. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us, protect us, preserve us, and make us successful in this life, in the life hereafter, and raise us to a more spiritual, a higher spiritual and exalted status in this life and in the next bi-ibnillahi ta'ala and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from nara jahannam and grant us his jannat al-firdaus aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfir Allah li wa lakum fa astaghfiru inna Allah ghafur rahim aqim as-salam